Hey, so you've heard of, well, if I, first, I want to say, if you haven't watched the last video I did, uh, it's, I recommend it. How did Jesus fulfill the law for us? Well, he died because the law demanded our death. That's it. The righteousness that we receive is the righteousness of the risen Christ. It's not according to his law-keeping in his earthly life, which he was not a sinner. That's good to note. Uh, we, we know that. Of course Jesus is not a sinner. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is spotless perfection. He himself committed no sin. And he died, not for his own sin, but for our sins. He bore our sins in his body on the tree. Now, you've heard of Lordship Salvation, which says, if you don't do such and such, or if you don't bear such and such fruit, or if you don't have a changed heart or a changed life, or if you don't have different desires, whatever you want to name it, then they say that you were never saved. And they're a bunch of heretics. If you don't know that, I recommend that you start there. Jesus died for sinful people, not so that they can be judged according to the law. He died bearing all sin in his body on the cross. And we are justified by faith alone. And that faith can be very small. And it can be even a child. A child doesn't produce a whole bunch of outward manifestations. You don't judge the you don't judge the spiritual by the flesh. We see Jesus and we count his his death as sufficient. His blood as pure, as cleansing, as saving to the uttermost, and his righteous life as our own, given to us as a free gift. So it doesn't matter how somebody lives or whether or not they pursue to, to grow or mature or anything. What matters is, is that blood? Is that blood enough? It starts there. So I don't care how twisted somebody might be living. It has to do with if they've trusted in the blood. God has pledged himself, sworn by his own name, because there's none greater. He swore by himself. He will lose none. It's eternal life. He's giving it as a free gift to sinners. That's the starting point. But there's something else. And if you haven't watched the last video, this is where I recommend that you, you go and watch that first. So we I talked about how did how would did Jesus fulfill the law? And it is that he was obedient unto death. Well, that, that actually, that's his, that's his love manifested. But he was obedient unto death in that he died under the sins. He died bearing our own sins, which was just condemnation. Under the administration of condemnation and death, he bore that death. He bore our sins. He bore the penalty. And on the cross, he said, it's finished. The law was taken out of the way. The handwriting of ordinances against us. No longer. No longer are we in bondage to them. We're dead to the law because we've died with Christ. Now, this is another part of vicarious law keeping that's important to understand. And I call it Lordship Discipleship. It's where people want to say that you should want to keep the law if you're going to be a disciple. No, I'm dead to the law. You can't have the law and have Christ. They're two different husbands. They're, the law was shown in its fullness in that Christ died. Jesus Christ died. The law condemns. It does not give life. So if we're going to grow in this realm of new life, it's not by looking at the law. It's by looking at Christ. There's only one way of maturity, and it is the perfecting of the conscience by the blood of Jesus, and drawing near to the throne of grace in confidence, knowing that he loves me. He proved it on the cross. He has brought me into eternal life. It's his word. He said that he did it. 
and he's brought me into eternal life and reckoning on that truth and reckoning myself dead to sin and dead to the law and dead to demands. So if you try to put me into a discipleship that is before the cross, you've got lordship discipleship. You've got, you've got, you've got something that's still in the administration of condemnation and death. There is no holiness according to law keeping that there's no righteousness according to law keeping there is a new and living way and he is holy he is beyond the law holy and so we're to be holy as he is holy that is by the imputed righteousness of the risen christ which is given to us as a free gift and we grow and mature and we are trained up disciple as a son not as a servant, as a son of the house, as an heir, by looking at Jesus Christ and knowing that we are loved and we are forgiven, that we are dead. And there's no, no demand that the law could place on us. We stand fast in the liberty. Don't give me a discipleship that involves any kind of trying to do better or be better. No, it is by reckoning it is by truth. It is our discipleship is a fellowship in the truth, a rejoicing and a joy and peace against the such things. There is no law. There's no law. It's far above the law. It's beautiful. So don't let somebody say now that you are now that you're born again, you should be walking by the spirit to fulfill the law. No, that's a misnomer. That is a that that's a wrong conclusion. Wrong conclusion. There's no law against the things of the spirit because you cannot judge the spirit by carnal ordinances. There is a new work of God which is circumcised from the body of sins in the flesh. It is a new work. And it is good and free and real and it is a fellowship in the joy of Jesus Christ. Total freedom. That's it. <laughs>